I told you to practice your decision making as a way to get better at it. What I haven't told you is how to start making better and more confident choices. That's what this episode is all about. Keep in mind that not all decisions need to be this involved. Most actually won't be. What I'm going to do is walk you through the individual steps of a decision-making process. Most of the steps will be for bigger decisions. So I encourage you to work through each step as they apply to your situation or decision rather. Before long, you won't need to think about the individual steps anymore. They will become an integral part of your own decision-making process. My name is Ronika Jacobs, and you have found my podcast, Strive for More, Your Best Life Now. While there are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there, you have taken the time out to listen to this one. And for that, I would like to say thank you. And so without any further delay, let's get to it. Let's strive for more. This is episode 116, Making Better Decisions. So the first question that you need to ask yourself is, does this decision need time? So let's talk about when you should go through the process that I'm going to talk about. Not all decisions are complicated or involve a lot of information and thought. In fact, Most decisions can be made rather quickly. You don't need to do a lot of research to decide on what to have for breakfast or which task is the most important to take care of first at work. On the other hand, some decisions take time. Sometimes it's because there's a lot of information to digest or a lot of variables that you need to factor in. Another great reason to take your time and be a little more cautious about your decision is that the impact is important. It affects other people or has long-reaching effects. You don't need to contemplate the decision about what brand of copy paper to buy. You do, however, want to give a lot of thought and consideration to putting in a business bid that may put your entire operating budget on the line or can make or break your company. Of course, these examples are extremes and most of your own decisions will fall somewhere in between. It's still good to start out by deciding whether or not the decision requires time or can be a snap decision. Get in the habit of answering that question each time in your decision-making process. After a little practice, you can make that call instinctively and quickly. So the next step would be evaluate your alternatives. Once you've determined that a choice needs a little more consideration, it's good to start by evaluating your alternatives. There are always alternatives. At the very least, you have the choice of doing something or not doing it. Most of the time though, there are a couple of different options to choose. Sometimes you have to dig a little deeper and think a little more creatively to come up with the alternatives, but they are usually there. Let's look back uh, at the previous example that I gave about bidding on a job that could make or break your business. One of the alternatives may be to focus on a couple of smaller bids instead and wait until your operating budget is larger before considering the larger jobs. Or it could be to partner up with a fellow small business and share the risk and the profit potential. This process will take a little time But it's time well spent if you can find a better alternative that removes some of the risks or promises a better outcome. You can brainstorm these alternatives on your own, with your team, or with your family and friends. It's helpful to get all the pertinent information and factors on paper so you can compare them. So the next thing to think about is choosing the best option. 
So once you know all your alternatives, it's time to make a decision. Yes, there's that word again. By choosing this route of decision making, you signed yourself up for making more of them. The good news is that these decisions will be easier to make. To get some momentum, start by eliminating the worst option or even several that you don't think will work well. Then go through the list comparing and contrasting until you find a winner. Not all options are going to be great options, but you can usually find the one that will do best in your particular situation. If you're working with a team or are making a big decision that will impact the entire family, it can help to involve everyone in this decision-making process. They will feel like they are part of the initial choices, making it easier to have them on board for the execution. Now, it's time to take action. Once you've made your decision, it's time to take action. After all, the best decision making doesn't do you any good until you act on it. With your route choosing, it's simply a matter of breaking the task down into milestones and steps. This exercise can be as involved or simple as you need it to be. Larger tasks will have more milestones and steps than smaller ones. I find it helpful to move to the action part as soon as possible after making the final decision. After all, one of my strengths is activator. I just get right down to it. That not only creates momentum, but it also keeps you from second guessing your choice or changing your mind a few times before getting started. Decide, commit, and get to work. Finally, revise if needed. There will be times when you regret your decision. Lord knows I have decisions that I have regretted all the time. It happens. It's part of life. We make mistakes, parameters change, or something completely outside of our control makes it not work out. When that happens, don't waste time fretting or beating yourself up over your decision. Instead, learn from it and then start to revise and come up with a new game plan. You may choose to go back to the other alternatives you found and start over from there, or just scrap it and start from step one. Work through the process, make a new decision, and start taking action again as soon as possible. That old saying about getting back on the horse holds a lot of truth. My name is Ronika Jacobs. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. In the next episode, I will be offering you a few tips that will help with smart decision making. If you are interested in booking me for a speaking event, you may contact me at rjacobs at striveforleadership.com or you can visit my website at www.striveforleadership.com. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you in the next episode. Don't forget to strive for more.